Hey there. So I've been wondering, is it Kara or Kara? Everybody asks. It's a uh, Kara, but either is fine. I, I okay. really don't. It doesn't well, bother me. I would like to make sure I, I at least put an effort into getting your name right. Names are important. Oh, it's fair. I, when I hear Kara, I feel like it's my like alter ego, cool British spy friend or something. Like it's my oh, you know, wow. the other side. <laughs> so awesome. Okay. Well, when we need our a uh, super cool British spy. <laughs> We know where to get one now. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having an amazing Tuesday. Posted our agenda into the Zoom chat, if you could mark your attendance. And uh, if you have any opens you'd like to discuss, uh, please add those. Any of our sub project leads, please uh, fill out any updates you want to share about the sub projects you're working on. Saw David already was in there typing away. We'll get started in just a minute. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. Grope, good. Great to see you. Nice to be seen. Do I have anyone that's interested in helping be the scribe today and take notes for us? Dave Rousseau, thank I, you. I, oh, I, Kara too, I, I yeah. Also. And Dave, woohoo! Hey, I have the Mary of scribes. And Zav, oh man, we're going to have the best notes ever. <laughs> I'm trying to do double duty for the first minute, so I may. Uh... I, I may have to defer to my many compatriots. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> no Let's give it another couple seconds and we will get rolling. Hopefully everyone did their homework. And this will be a very smooth running meeting. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the September 27th edition of the best working group. Can't believe September's almost over. Uh, we're moved into fourth quarter. Ah, crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, let's see, looking over the list, I do not see any new friends today, uh, which is okay. We're all old friends. Let uh, please type any opens into the agenda you want to talk about. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, creating a process to review our backlog, and hopefully everyone did their homework and looked at the existing issues so we can have a productive uh, conversation around uh, if we want to if, what we want to do with those issues. But let us. Start start the call with some updates about our sub projects and the education city. So I will turn uh, things over to David Wheeler if he's ready. I'll talk very slow until he unmutes. <laughs> I'm unmuted. Um, I, I'm, but I'm trying, I'm still trying to switch context. Um, no worries. Let's do the education, education sig. sig. Yeah, let's do that first, and then you can cut, pop back with best practices badge and the course. So, uh, Dave, you want to give us a uh, Dave Rousseau, give us like a two minute update on section one. 
Sure. Uh, so section one is um, content and curation. Uh, we did not have a meeting the week of the 15th, um, but uh, we reviewed the overall plan that pertained to our section, made some adjustments, traded some things off to the other sections, waiting for some, some give backs from them. Uh, but the uh, we've, we've agreed on the goals. Uh, we're going to start working on tasking and, and starting to move things forward. Uh, the one thing that we are currently doing, and we would invite anyone and everyone to contribute to, there's a link there. We're gathering any publicly available educational materials uh, and or materials that may be available um, from, from different organizations. So if anyone has any of this information, we'd like to share uh, where to find these materials and what the content is, we would greatly appreciate that. That's going to help us understand what the current landscape is, um, any areas we may have, you know, gaps or deficiencies, or any areas we may be strong and we can focus on initially as we get things rolling. So uh, we've got our meetings every two weeks. Um, they are Thursday morning uh, U.S. time. Uh, this week is is a meeting, so if anyone would like to join, needs the information, it's on the Open SSF calendar. We welcome any additional help, assistance, participation, or words of wisdom. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see Glenn on. Uh, Kara? Uh, on the educational materials, I've been looking at it. Do you want us to just make comments directly into that doc if there's something that you think is missing, or would you prefer us comment in the Slack channel? Uh, please put it in the doc, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Um, and not everyone's on the Slack channel, and sometimes it's hard to decipher the, the the content as the Slack channel it gets very busy at times. But yeah, um, we want something to work from and that Google Doc is the first place for us to start doing that. Thank you. Um, I know that section two and three are in similar states. Glenn actually has had a couple calls. I believe Sal has had one. Um, and as I note in the full SIG notes, uh, essentially we took the uh, stream one of the mobilization plan talked through it and reviewed it and divided it up into three sections, which is right now we are trying to uh, work more in parallel with three groups. Uh, everyone is welcome to come and uh, observe or contribute however they desire. Uh, we do have a uh, issue 11 was passed over to us from uh, the vulnerability disclosures working group. And there is a desire to develop a kind of cross uh, foundation dictionary. So if anyone is interested in contributing to that particular PR, that would be very useful to have a set of definitions that the whole foundation can use when we're talking about certain terms. Right now, the terms that are listed are very focused around CVD and vulnerability disclosure. But we want to expand that into, especially like this section, uh, secure development concepts, uh, cyber and information security concepts, or if there's any uh, particular uh, nuances around open source or open source development, we want to make sure we get those terms uh, accounted for in the dictionary. And that'll be a resource that the Education SIG will uh, curate for the whole foundation. So if anyone has any ideas, wants to make any contributions to that artifact, that's PR 11. And also, if you have any suggestions for any secure development topics, one of the uh, stream two of the plan is cultivating a proposal for a secure development podcast. So if anyone has any ideas or any subject matter experts they think would be valuable to interview and talk with, uh, that would be super groovy. So just kind of fob those over to the uh, SIG. Any questions about the education SIG? Hopefully I've stalled long enough that Mr. Wheeler is ready to talk about his uh, updates. Okay, <clears throat> I think I have. Uh, so we're on, on the uh, best practice badge and course, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, by, by the way, my, my apologies for the brief stall, but there's actually a reason and that might eventually end up the, the best practices badge. Uh, some of you may be aware that there's a new U.S. government bill in uh, the U.S. Senate involving open source software. Um, there was a meeting of the OpenSSF uh, Public Policy Subcommittee, which tries to discuss these sorts of things. And one of the interesting comments that was fed back by several folks 
um, was, um, hey, gla really glad they're paying attention to open source, but if they impose a whole bunch of requirements on evaluation on only open source software, and there's nothing corresponding to closed source, frankly, that, that couldn't be uh, at the very least unfair and frankly um, may create ridiculous roadblocks because of course closed source software can also be vulnerable. What a surprise. Uh, and really should be evaluated before you bring it in. Um, so right now we're rushed, but because of the news cycle, we're rushing to try to figure out how to comment on this thing. Um, one thought I, and my apologies for springing this on, but this is just a thought I had this morning. Given that, oh wait, we really should evaluate all open source, all software um, with similar criteria. We currently have a concise guide for evaluating open source. Maybe we should broaden at least the questions. Maybe the maybe the specific how do you measure still has to be open source. The top level questions, frankly, are the same, uh, but we really didn't think of it in that light. So that. I, 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 right now, this is just a, hey, this is a crazy idea I had this morning. <laughs> so, but it, it would connect to the crazy, to the other things I'm trying to connect. All right. Sorry for a uh, long side, side thing. Okay. Main things. Open SSF best practices badge. Um, the feedback uh, from some projects has uh, requested some mild relaxation of two of the gold criteria. Um, in a number of cases, uh, some folks are concerned about the reproducible builds criterion. Um, one of them is, frankly, a number of folks don't release built projects. For example, the Apache Software Foundation has a policy of never releasing built products. So for them, it doesn't really make sense to have a reproducible build. I don't have a build. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same for the Linux kernel. Um, and, and, and also a couple of folks have said, hey, we can get close, but some of these uh, formats require timestamps that are kind of a pain to deal with. Timestamps by themselves can't be a vulnerability unless, they can't be malicious unless there's something else that's triggering off them. So, hey, can we say we'd love to have bit for bit, but can we have an exemption for timestamps? So, well, I guess the real goal is to counter malicious insertions and timestamps by themselves aren't malicious insertions. So that's so there's the proposal on the table. Second proposal is actually pretty straightforward. Branch coverage um, says you have to have 80% branch coverage. Turns out there's code out there where there are branches that cannot be taken. There is no test you could write that could test the branch. Crobe is giving me a funny look saying, why would you write code like that? And the answer is basically people in, there are people who write code that says, if um, thing that should never happen, then you know do something. It's a defensive coding measure. Now, I'm not frankly a big fan of that approach. I think assertions which have the same effect are, but are easier to explain and are easily ignored by branch tools, by many tools. But, you know, this, nevertheless, it's fair that clearly branch coverage doesn't make sense for branches that cannot be run. So the proposal is to say, you know, you're allowed to, you know, ignore branches if they cannot ever be tested. Um, I don't think that's the best way to design a system, but people have pre-existing systems um, this typically hits systems that people don't want to make many changes to. So, uh, sorry for the long, lo long thing, but, uh, these are changes to criteria. So I want to treat them as important. So are you looking for the group to review those and kind of weigh in with comments on the issue? Yes, exactly. If, if you, I mean, you don't have to, but, um, yes, it'd be great. Pro or con, if you think that's crazy, tell us why, what you want to say, if you think that's great. Um, know that too. And really, I think the GitHub issues are really the easiest way because then it's it's all in one place. Vicki has a question. Uh, yes, actually a question, not a comment. Um, I know. Uh, David has the uh, question of the reproducible build stuff and those qualifications. Um, has the suggested change been run past the reprodu reproducible builds uh, community? Um, I, 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 have, have I have not, I, I, I have not, I certainly could. Um, 
Uh, I, I can guess right away that they are they would be fine with the hey if you do don't produce builds. Um, uh, I will sir, I, I'd be happy to post to that. I'm, I am part of that group. Um, I didn't I just didn't think of doing that. Um, I will say I, I can already tell their an answer from some of them who are very strong purists. Um, <clears throat> no. um, Not they, in they, open source. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, you know. Whereas the the criteria's goal is to counter malicious code, whereas I think for some of them there's a there's a higher goal. So I will be unsurprised if some folks are unhappy because of that. Um, uh, oh, that but, aside, no, that's, I, I think yeah, that, that getting happy, their, happy to post it. In, in general, getting their feedback on that at least sure. allows you to say, and look, the reproducible builds team has signed up. The people who actually sure. do this stuff all the time. I think that could be a really nice supporting piece oh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, documentation I, I i say all that as commentary that's not to say yeah no as is that i'm actually on their mailing list i just you know the the, the number of things i'm trying to do at the same time is kind of a uh, horrifying <laughs> to me so uh <laughs> so uh yeah so i will i will post a uh, a request for comment and on on there uh right now and we'll see and we'll see what they say as i said i have my guesses but that doesn't matter even if they even if my guess is correct still want to hear from them and um you know if they in particular if they can identify a case where yes a timestamp could all by itself uh without any other malicious code cause malicious execution then we would want to know that absolutely okay so we'll, we'll do we'll do um asap thank you Good idea. Any other best practices badge comments or questions for David? All right, let's move on to the class. I can't hear you, Mr. Wheeler. Ah, uh, let's try again. <laughs> All right, someday I'm going to learn how, how a mute button works. That would be awesome. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, there's a proposed minor change. Uh, it turns out that when you use random numbers, but you want a numbers within a particular numerical range, it's really easy to accidentally um, uh, bias the answers. This is something called modulo bias. Um, this is something I wasn't particularly aware of. I think many other people aren't aware of either, but it happens if you use the remainder function, which does limit the range, but doesn't guarantee that there's an equal number in each bin. So uh, we already have a section about random numbers and the importance for crypto things. So just a little tweak to add to that. that, and that's all. Very nice. I don't see Glenn, but I do see Ricardo. Uh, do we have any updates on SKF you wanna share with the group or are things going steady? Yeah, things are going steady. So last week we did some merges. Uh, there was also somebody who uh, contributed five new labs with the uh, web cache poisoning and the uh, HTTP response splitting and all that good stuff. Yeah, really cool. So we had to double check that, verify if it still worked, build the images, and then uh, deploy them uh, to our demo environment as well. So that's all merged now. So that's pretty good. Uh, we also had some uh, uh, meetings and discussions with Randall, also uh, talking about uh, strategic way of going forward, making stuff more maintainable, uh, fixing UH, UI, uh, and all that good stuff. So had some uh, pretty good discussions there also. And um, for those of you that aren't involved with the education SIG, we're taking a multi-pronged approach to how we're doing education. We're leveraging tools like uh, the um, edX LF course around the secure development fundamentals. Another leg of our stool and how we're approaching this is SKF. So we want to make sure wherever possible we have hands-on labs for people to learn these concepts. So we're trying to again try to reduce multiple channels. So uh, 
you'll be hearing a lot more about updates to SKF and the training course and other things uh, as we move along. Randall. Um, but we actually recruit, or I recruited two designers. Um, so uh, I was just reminding you about the uh, educational design lady you met because we might need to, or we, we might want to get a hold of her at some capacity. Exactly. See, I even remembered her name. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Awesome. Uh, did Spyros join? He did not. We'll get an update maybe on inventory next time. I see that Azim put a couple updates. Do you want to share those with the group, Azim? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, we launched scorecard badges like a few weeks ago and uh, we are getting some, you know, good PR on it. People are interacting with it. Um, so one of the issues that people have brought up is when you click on the badge, it goes to like this raw JSON dump. Um, so people want a nice UX to kind of interact with. Um, it's something we are working on, but since none of the scorecard maintainers are like, you know, UXC folks or like yeah, it, no JavaScript much, we are looking for some help or volunteers to kind of, you know, uh, help us figure this out. Um, so that's one update. Um, also, uh, we are can, talking can you, can, about- uh, Can you stop right there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure I understand why. Um, I mean, frankly, this is a Chrome problem. If you click on that in Firefox, it looks great because Firefox knows about JSON files. Um, and I actually like that feature. Have you thought about just reformatting the JSON instead of trying to create a fancy UI? Yeah, so the the problem with, the ref, I mean, we can do something like a pretty print JSON. Um, the problem may be that folks are depending on on this to you know use it programmatically and we don't know if, if we might break it. Uh, but also uh, we are thinking that having some kind of UX might be better than just dumping out JSON. Um, so yeah, may, like like you said, maybe our V0 should be just pretty printing the JSON uh, and then investing in the UX. I might suggest on that particular topic, Azim, uh, maybe sending a uh, request out to the uh, working group mailing list as we have a lot more people on the list that may be able to participate that aren't here today. Sounds good. I'll do that. Um, the next updates I had is uh, we're thinking about what should scorecard be, you know, uh, trying to do next. And uh, since we have this API and like it's easier to very scalably uh, get scorecard data for uh, the OSS dependencies, we are thinking uh, we can start looking into um, making these features in GitHub PRs where you can like evaluate your incoming dependencies and say, hey, you've just added this new dependency and this is what scorecard has to say about um, your new dependency. Um, so yeah, just, just initial thoughts here. Um, so we also have Naveen and Brian who are on the scorecard team uh, talking about this in the upcoming, um, I think this is the Linux, Linux Foundation member summit. Um, so yeah, very early thoughts here. Uh, we are still working out the details. Awesome. Any questions for Zeem about scorecard? Some great progress. All right, I'm gonna scroll back up. No one added any opens. So we get to the fun administrivia part of the call. Um, I'll, does anyone have any opens they wanna to talk to before we start doing some backlog scrubbing? All right. If I could please have everyone take a look at our issue backlog. Uh, first off, let's talk about a uh, cadence with which we would like to do this activity. Uh, so we'd like to do this once a month, once a quarter. What do we feel is uh, an efficient use of this group's time to make sure that we're accounting for issues and PRs? Thank you. Um, so right now it looks like people aren't using issues a lot. Is the intention to move uh, 
more things into issues because that's really going to impact the frequency. Um, if we're going to have a lot more issues, we should be looking at them a lot more often sort of thing, right? Um, so if that is the intention um, and we're going to move all things there, which huge thumbs up, right? Yay, go team. Um, I would say probably monthly. So but I think my intention is because I get to work with a lot of groups and they will have some best practice needs. You will be seeing an influx of more issues coming into the group. Right now it's a bit stale. I admit we haven't used it very effectively. Um, but now that we have things like our concise guides and other artifacts, I, I would like to more publicly uh, use this. So your suggestion is monthly to start maybe? Uh, I would say monthly or have some sort of uh, quarterly round robin um, issue uh, warden, issue right? Captain, the person yeah. who keep, yeah, keeps an eye on them and then they report back every meeting as just one of these sub uh, projects, right? It's like, hey, so we've got this issue you should go look at, here's the link. Or we got this many issues, they were all spam, post them, that sort of stuff. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rousseau. Uh, I was going to suggest that we definitely should start on a monthly cadence. Um, and depending upon however many issues we end up getting, we can, you know, cut that back to, uh, I think quarterly is too infrequent because if something comes in at the beginning of a quarter, it's going to sit for three months before we take a look at it. Um, but I think monthly is a good way to, to, to start and uh, we can adjust as we move forward. A any thoughts on the warden captain suggestion Vicki had? Uh, I absolutely agree with that. Very nice. Dan. Hi. Um, uh, so for what it's worth, I also strongly support moving uh, lots of discussions into issues. Uh, it's a, selfishly speaking, it's just a for, you know, a form, uh, a format that I'm very uh, familiar with and, and I think it really helps to engage with the community as well. Um, the, uh, also, plus you can, you can share the link to an issue so that people know exactly what you're talking about. There are all kinds of good reasons to do it. Um, I like the idea of doing a monthly. I also like the idea. I, I don't, haven't worked with the concept of an issue warden before. I do, they get a special uniform, but, uh, the, uh, make you a uh, sticker. But uh, but yeah, that sounds good. Um, I was also going to suggest use of labels. I'm strongly yes. in favor of using labels. And in particular, I, I want to suggest, this is something that we do in TAG. We actually use milestones, but I think you don't want to do that for this because you have real deliverables in this, in this group um, uh, where you assign a, a, some kind of metadata. In this case, I guess I'm suggesting a label to indicate mm -hmm this issue will be discussed at such and such a call. So sometimes having labels that are ephemeral like that where uh, so that so that you can then actually go into the GitHub UI and you can and you can generate or that whoever's going to generate the agenda can use that to generate the agenda uh, pretty easily. Um, if you if you know that there are issues that are that are in the GitHub, a register that are going to be discussed on a particular call or that you want to tee up for a discussion on a particular call. And just in general, I would suggest lots of labels to over overcompensate on labels and you can always uh, rein it rein it in. Those are my thoughts. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Randall. Would the issue warden be responsible for linked issues and other repos for responding to those? Uh, Probably, I, I don't, we'd have to talk through and document that for uh, how we want to leverage it, but I think that makes sense. That if you're okay. on the queue for the month, that would be, you would assist there. Okay. I'm, I'm in... always, you, you always have, you know, me as the, the, the leader of the SIG and you know, kind of co-leads can assist there as well for that continuity. Right. Well, I mean, I know that some repos also say that if you're going to link an issue, please do it in a separate issue. So if we want to do that. I think that should be noted. Because linked issues don't don't actually open issues and repos. They just link them. We'll have to document that for ourselves of how we want to manage that. 
and uh, execute yeah. it. And I'm plus one for the monthly meeting. Okay. Vicky? Um, not to rabbit hole on implementation when that is not what we were going to discuss, but since then, open the can of worms. Um, uh, you know, big plus one on labels. Uh, we use this in SPDX legal uh, to very good effect. Um, it not only tells people when they should have things done, although we do have, by the way, in SPDX legal, we have deliverables and releases on a quarterly basis. So we use labels for that. But um, also it, it makes it very easy for the people who opened the uh, issue or otherwise our stakeholders in it to see when they can show up to a call to have you know their say right um this is going to be at some point in this release or this is going to be in this month that's super helpful but you don't need an issue for that or a label for that frankly you can just put that in a a uh, comment um if you we get to the point where we need to automatically generate um agenda items from it uh that's I can't imagine we're going to have that many issues that it's going to get to that point, but you never know. But if it does, then we can always add issues uh, at that point um, for that. But um, yeah, yay, plus one to labels. Awesome. Anyone have any additional thoughts or comments? Uh, so it sounds like we are landing on a monthly review cadence. We're going to have some type of rotating a uh, warden who will help us groom the backlog with issues and PRs. And um, we also will uh, exponentially start using uh, tags and labels. Any thoughts on those, that kind of summary? Thumbs up, got some nods. All right, so I think that is what, how we will proceed. Now for the $50,000 question, is anyone interested in becoming our first uh, issue warden to help us uh, groom the backlog, get to work with amazing people like me? What's the uh, term? For, for being the warden. The, um, we would need to decide that, I guess. Uh, would we want to maybe rotate that quarterly? So you'd could be it, issue one for like, three months, please? Could it be like a team of people? Yeah, yeah. I, I assume it's going to be a group of people that will we'll kind of rotate around. And Because, I mean, I have experience doing it, but I, I do a lot of things, but I could definitely add it to my things to keep a lookout for. Oh, Randall, honey, no. I'm going to preemptively shoot that down because you are just, my friend, you have too many plates spinning. And I do. I, I hope <laughs> maybe. Um, I feel like SKF is my biggest plate, but I think I have it under control. You probably do, but you're in so many working groups and you always <laughs> are right there at the front of the line. Um, if you want, you know you best. Um, and you I'm, know I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking so. it on. I'm just saying that I could keep an eye on it if there's no volunteers. That's all I'm saying. I'm, so the reason I put my foot in it is because I was thinking about volunteering. Um, and uh, part of that is because, you know, I think it could be a good way for me to, I don't have that many plates right now. And, um, uh, it'd be a good way for me to get in, um, more engaged in, in the work. And um, so um, um, I'm more than happy to, to jump in, but I will need some support because I have not played the role of warden before. And so um, uh, I need probably some support from y'all. Absolutely. And I think what I'll also do is I'll put a request out to the mailing list again, because we have 40 or 50 people that are loosely associated with this group this has been we've kind of coalesced to this as our core group but uh, there may be others that are interested in kind of having that uh, more intimate experience with the group so i'll put a, a call out to the group if anyone else is interested in participating just reply back to that we'll have a, maybe we'll set up a quick 30 minute meeting to kind of hash out how we want, want this to look like and how we will proceed and so um 
we will plan for, I will loosely target our next meeting to come back to the group with a proposal of how we're gonna operate this. And maybe we'll walk through um, a couple of the current issues that are in the backlog. We may be able to um, adjudicate uh, more quickly than others. That sound fair? All right. Yeah, and, and thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And we want to make this uh, low effort. I'll create some sticker rewards. We'll mail out to people. Uh, that's always been exciting. Uh, any other questions or comments about the proposal and how we're going to move forward with grooming the backlog? And especially in light of the education SIG uh, ramping up, I expect we will have uh, a lot of requests for assistance from that group over here to this team. I did say stickers. Stickers are the best. All right. Uh, any other topics we want to discuss today? Otherwise, we may adjourn a little early. And I would Can put, I? please. Oh, uh, I just want to do a quick farewell to everyone since this was probably looking at schedule is going to be my uh, last call. Um, I, uh, this, gosh, I hope this isn't news to Eric, but um, I have given my notice at Wipro um, effective October 7th. I did that last week. And so I'm tying everything up. Um, I may be back at some point, but for now, Gonna go do my own thing for a bit. Awesome. You're all lovely. Um, and <laughs> I, I will miss you. Well, thank you. But I uh, won't miss you enough to get up at 7 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> for a call. Sorry. Oh. If, if, if I will observe that some others, including our illustrious Monsieur Krobe, have moved orgs and have stayed stuck to the Velcro of this working group. So <laughs> I so am very familiar with back. how with how open source works. So I, I'm <laughs> yes, familiar I with that. Um, I might have been around a little bit, but yes, um, it's yes. a matter of time and priorities. But if anyone wants to talk at any time, I just threw my Calendly in there. My calendar is a source of truth for me. So just grab some time. Got just want to make sure you knew you were welcome. Well, thank you, my dear. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for all your contributions and your insights. Uh, open door, you're always welcome to pop back as an individual contributor or just as a potential other member of the foundation. That'd be great. And, uh, you know, keep an eye on the mailing list. And, uh, you know, if you have something that's interesting, feel free to always comment and, you know, this call has changed times many times over our uh, two years together. So I anticipate this will not be the final resting place for time. So just keep an eye on if we have any changes that might be a little more time zone friendly. Absolutely. Well, thank you all. You're, you're uh, brilliant and welcoming and friendly. And it's, it really is a huge testament to the community. Um, so keep up the great work. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any other, um, hopefully no one else is moving. <laughs> I can't lose the whole group in one call. Uh, but is there any, any other comments, any thoughts before we close the call for today? All right. Thank you, everybody, for your past, present, and future contributions. I really appreciate the group. And we will report back next call with how uh, we're going to be managing issues with our first warden and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, homework assignment, uh, please be thinking about other collaborative group projects we may want to work on before the education SIG comes over and starts assigning things. So like we we're working on the concise guides, are there other projects that the group wants to work on in that vein that we can have an immediate impact to developers and maintainers with? So be thinking about that. And uh, I wish you all a great day. Happy Tuesday. Bye, Vicky. <laughs> Cheers, all. <laughs>